<laughs> Route 66 starts in Chicago. You know, it's in the park. That was park, a great fountain. Park. By the side of the road, just over the hill, that's where the fun begins. And where time stands still Lay down your cares Lighten up your load Hey, there's a ton of fun waiting by the side of the road Let's go to Grand Park Funk's Grove The Dixie Trucker Stop The Pig Hip Soulsby Service Station Chain of Rocks We'll get a Drew's Frozen Custard Then we'll stop at Merrimack On to the Coral Court The Steak and Shake And Henry's Rabbit Ranch By the side of the road just over the hill That's where the fun begins And where time stands still Lay down your care Lighten up your load Hey, there's a ton of fun waiting by the side of the road Our first stop was... Chicago. The thing we liked about it was the bean. The bean? The bean is a fun thing. We'll get a big boy burger, try the wagon wheel motel, see the Coleman in Miami and the big blue whale onto the round barn, the Conoco into the dew drop in. Check out the Cadillac Ranch, eat at the big Texan inn by the side of the road, just over the hill. That's where the fun begins and where time stands still. Lay down your care. Lighten up your load Hey, there's a ton of fun waiting by the side of the road Chicago's famous bean sculpture is the start of the famous Route 66 road. Sleep at the old blue swallow down the Will Rogers Road See the Santa Fe line dine at the El Rancho We'll make the wigwam jackrabbit twin arrows to go from the Grand Canyon Caverns to the sunny ocean view By the side of the road Up around the bend You can get your kicks And you can find a friend Lay down your cares Lighten up your load Hey, there's a party congregating by the side of the road Yeah, a lot of people go there and, and, they, and they take pictures of themselves and reflect it in the room. Lay down your cares Lighten up your load There's a ton of fun waiting by the side of the road Chicago, and we had a lot of fun in Chicago. Then we had their pizza, remember? We went and had a Chicago pizza. Yes, we did. They had the river, they had the boat. Yeah. And, and there so was a lot. very first stop was uh, Del the, Rey's. Remember? That's right, the chicken, chicken place. place. Yeah, and yeah. he was very interesting. He's a very nice guy. That was a place that did the roller ice skating rink on ice the skating top, on the roof. yeah? It's a little bit off the beaten trail, though, like a lot of Route 66 is. Yes. It's off the beaten trail. But these little restaurants that, you know, have been there for so long. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they're very good. We're standing outside of Delray's Chicken Basket talking to Pat. Pat's the owner of this establishment. This is one of the oldest establishments you'll find on Route 66, as you exit uh, Chicago. My family bought the restaurant in 1963. Um, the restaurant had been here since 46. That's when this building opened. And prior to 1946, it was in an old gas station just down the street a little bit. So we've been here close to 85 years. Um, the restaurant that you see behind us, the Gary Piper, used to be my father's restaurant back in the 40s. It was called the Woodbite. Route 66 closed sometime between 60 and 62. The old owner, uh, Mr. Caleric, used to do things like have hire ice skaters to put up on the roof that would draw people in off the highway. So they'd have uh, lights shining down on the roof, they'd flood the flat roof, 
and he'd hire people to go up there and skate to attract people. Oh, so it was uh, people actually didn't come here and skate, they just came to watch the uh, Exactly, the they came to watch the professionals do it. Well, this dining room is um, the original main dining room. The wall that you see in front of you right now with the Route 66 signs is just a little highlight of, you know, let people know that have no idea what Route 66 is, who we are, what, what they're experiencing. After we left Chicago, it started getting better. Yes. Because yes, people did. outside of Chicago were very interested in us. Yes, they wanted to talk to us. They wanted to tell people out there all about Route 66. Hello, right now we're in Joliet. Is that how you say Joliet? It's Joliet, and we're proud to be here. <laughs> and Joliet, we're in uh, a museum. What is the name of this? Well, we're actually in the Joliet Area Historical Museum, but we're in the part that we call the Route 66 Experience. Well, we're making our way through the Route 66 Experience, and we've set up shop in the mock drive-in, of all things. People can sit in these realistic car couches, like the back of a 57 Chevy, and and check out all the different great attractions in Joliet as well as throughout uh, Illinois on Route 66. And take charge and watch all the, the scenery on the murals and the interactive little car that travels Route 66 up here. As you're cozied up on these car couches in our mock drive-in, you can check out, uh, we had costume characters come in and do a virtual tour of all the different elements that show you how many ways you can touch and interact with the exhibit. It's our little mock uh, drive-in diner. You can place your order for a cheeseburger or a hot dog or whatever you, or, or appetite desires. I don't think she'll be serving anybody anytime soon. But when you check out our car here, people are welcome to come in and press as the different buttons of the car are to take a sound bite from those different decades. Over there is another key element of the Route 66 experience. It's our free photo booth. You can take your picture in the set of the on the stage of the Rialto Square Theater in a Collins Street prison or one of the Route 66 murals you see here and email it to yourself or a friend about your travels along Route 66. Our last stop, if you're getting a little tired, if you traveled the whole experience, is our mock Route 66 hotel room. If you sit down on the bed, you can dial up on the phone, not room service, but actually episodes of the Route 66 television series featuring Buzz and Todd. Uh, we're at the Route 66 experience with John Weiss. John Weiss is a noted author of many books about uh, Route 66 and he's going to tell us a little story about this this gasoline pump. What can you say, John? Well, of course, Route 66 is the road culture, and when it first started, they have to have a way of, of furnishing the gasoline or the petroleum that was needed. In the beginning, they just poured it out of buckets, but then somebody came up with a way of dispensing it. But most people don't realize how this works. This is not electrified. Here's how it works. It's called a visual or a gravity flow pump. Now, the way it works, over on the side over here, we have a handle. And the, let's get back over here. The handle pumps. You can't see it from over there, but there's a handle that pumps back and forth, back and forth. And what happens is that the gas fills up into this visual tank. Now, when people came in to buy gas, they'd, the attendant, of course, would wait on them. They'd, they wouldn't say how many dollars of gas you wanted, how many gallons of gas. Well, let's just say you came in and wanted to buy five gallons worth of gas. Right. This is filled up now, and it starts at zero and goes down. Oh, I see. So then you would take the hose and you would drain. That's all you're really doing is draining five gallons out. It would go to the five bar. Uh -huh. You just got five gallons worth of gas. Beautiful. And then the next car that would pull in, they'd get the handle, they'd pump it back up again and fill it back up again. And so uh, it was a very simple mechanism. However, at the end of the day, there was always gas left over. And you, somebody could come in and take that gas. So they would simply drain it into this here and it would go back into the tanks. Ah, I see and then they'd put a lock on it and it's ready for the next day. Okay, John, we're sitting, standing in front of this uh, It's, it's called an car. economy car. It's the only one in existence and it was made here in Joliet. But in the era, the days of this type of car, there weren't any real rules of the road as we know them today. People would be shocked by it. As a matter of fact, the roads were like 16 feet wide. You'd ride in the middle. And so when you met somebody, then you'd have to pass them up. And most roads weren't even uh, paved. So they were developing rules of the road. It was okay to pass on hills and curves as long as you did it courteously. Now how you pass on a hill or curve courteously, I don't know, but that's what the rules of the road said. But they did find that to be dangerous. 
So in Glenarm, Illinois, just on the south of Springfield, you'll be going past yep. there. There's a big hill. And on the top of that hill, what they tried in an experiment, they put up a big mirror. Now the idea was that somebody coming up the hill could see cars coming from the other side of the hill and they would know if it was safe to pass. There was only one problem. Everybody was driving along in cars like this, looking up at the mirror, head on collisions on the top of the hill. <laughs> That museum is very interesting, don't you think? Oh yeah, they had the Blues Brothers in it? Yeah, they did, because the prison that's in the neighborhood uh, filmed the Blues Brothers. Yeah. And how about, uh, how about those murals in town? Oh, they're beautiful. It's a, it's a must-see on Route 66. And including this mural that you're seeing now in the, in the show is uh, one that's painted inside the museum. That's right, that's right. And they've got their exhibits, uh, what you saw, you would sit down and you could pretend you're at a movie. Or a t that TV. That old television, yeah, yeah which television. I played around a little yeah. with the show. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun day. It was, it was really nice in the museum. Like right behind us, you can enter our historical museum and enter through a life-size canal and then take a trip through the history of Joliet. It's a minimal fee and it's an awesome experience. This right here behind us uh, is a, a sculpture that's actually made of Joliet limestone on the bottom. Um, and it symbolizes the lift bridges, which when you come to Joliet, you gotta love our bridges. We have four of the five different kinds of lift bridges over the Des Plaines River throughout Joliet. And so this uh, demonstrates just one of those. Oh, I see. So when you drive by, you will notice the Route 66 insignias and signs directing you to Joliet Kicks on Route 66 for the Welcome Center. Our, but the actual historical museum is in the old Methodist Church on the corner of Cass and Ottawa Streets. Oh. Well, we're entering and the historical museum. First, you'll sit in this gallery area and you'll actually watch a video uh, of all the history, kind of a flash montage of Joliet history. The doors will open and it'll reveal this life-size canal because Joliet is actually the city of steel and stone. And we get that from the Des Plaines River or the INM Canal. Uh, but people actually like these models up here, and yes, they're models, although they look realistic, uh, worked on the canal with mules uh, and gathered limestone. Uh, to build many of our historic buildings throughout our town. Our, our, like I said, Joliet was the city of steel and stone, and steel, well, nothing says more steel than the railroad. So if you look above, Vince, and we'll see one of our railroad workers are is pining away. Well, we, we continue through uh, the Historical Museum um, with an uh, uh, exhibit on on lifestyle at home. This is particularly uh, depicting a parlor and a kitchen over here behind you uh, to the a typical Joliet Victorian family. Now Vince, we said all aboard, so we better step up. It's right. the Joliet trolley and it's gonna take us on a tour through historic Joliet. You get in this pretty much life-size trolley right here in the center of the Joliet Area Historical Museum. Sit down for a ride on an interactive TV screen that'll actually have all the bells and whistles and narration of the history of Joliet. We've got uh, the old uh, historic street in Joliet, complete with the Rialto Square Theater marquee sign, and we're gonna go check them out a little bit later. Uh, but the picture shows that used to be shown there are all the uh, fancy dresses and clothes in the downtown shops and we continue to see all the different offices and uh, buildings things and shops throughout Joliet that would have been um, back then. Well we've headed upstairs ours in the museum and as you can see we're kind of a little more of a time warp. Uh, we're heading into the 50s uh, and all the different artifacts and events that happened in Joliet at that time. Um, uh, for instance, Joliet was named an all-American city, so you can read about the campaign and the key uh, people that were part of that process. But these actually are documenting uh, some of the new businesses that came to Joliet along Jefferson Street, uh, the independent living structures, ours, and the actual first mall that came to Joliet, Louis Joliet Mall. This actually documents where we are right now, with two great casinos, both Harris and Empress. Harris is actually located just seconds from here. Well, we've exited the museum, we've had a great time, and we encourage everybody to come back.
we're on the corner here with one of our uh, murals and mosaics, which you'll find sprinkled throughout the entire city of Joliet by our Friends of Community Public Art. This specific one is actually devoted to Route 66, and you'll notice within it uh, all kinds of Route 66 icons, shields, and information. Now, we're going to head down um, through downtown Joliet, lots of great restaurants and cool attractions, and end up at the historic Rialto Square Theater, which actually today, of all days, over 30 years, they have not lowered the large chandelier in the center of the Rialto. We're going to get to meet the Duchess today. Absolutely. The, remember when we were in that theater, they had the walls all full of all the signatures? That's right. It's probably the oldest theater on Route 66, it's isn't it, It's the oldest John? operating theater, operating. continuously operating. There's some a couple a little bit older, but they've been closed down for years and they remodel them. This is continuously operating. It actually opened on May 24th, 1926. Route 66 began right in front of here on November 11th, 1926. So it's actually a little bit older than Route 66 in itself. Uh, what was the alignment after this one in front of the Rialto? After this, they had to move it over a little bit, so they went to Ottawa Street, where the museum is at. Uh huh. And then they uh, uh, had to move it again, so Ottawa Street is 66, and Scott Street, which is over there, uh -huh. I say. So all three are legitimate Route 66 alignments. Eventually, though, that Route 66 became so popular, along with the Joliet Arsenal in the business district here, that they had to divert it around Joliet. So Route 66 began here. But then they moved it around and then they changed it to 66A or alternate because it was so congested they had to bring the people around it in the years. So what was the final alignment? The last one? It keeps changing. It keeps still changing. keeps changing yeah. because it's historic 66 now. And so now we have areas we call spurs. You're going to see that. Uh -huh. And that's a little piece of alignment. We've got abandoned pieces of alignment. Um, it's just all over the place. We've taken the, the routings that have the most amount of of attractions on it yes and that's what we promote that's where your signage is going to be where we want to direct the people it, there may be other alignments but we can just get people confused that way and there isn't necessarily something worthwhile to see yeah. so our signage brings you to the most active areas Uh, we're now in the uh, Rialto Theater in Joliet, and this is Randy. Randy is in charge of this magnificent structure. Well, the beauty of this theater is it's, it's marvelous uh, architecture, which I describe as probably the, uh, the idea the architect had in the 1920s was to take every great architectural feature in the world and put them in one place. So the location that we're in right now, which is called the Esplanade, was designed after the uh, Palace of Versailles, the Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles. Um, as you go down the Esplanade, you enter into uh, the Arch area, which was designed after the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, and takes you into the Rotunda, which then is uh, designed um, after the uh, the Parthenon uh, with the uh, with the distinct columns that are holding up the uh, the rotunda and, and uh, surrounding the rotunda, uh, and it does kind of give you a, a great look of European style and architecture. Um, and as you see down the way, we are we are working on what um, has been called uh, one of the great chandeliers in in the world. Um, its name is the Duchess. Um, it's known, I think, as a seven largest chandelier. Well, at the, at the point where the uh, esplanade intersects the uh, the rotunda are the two grand staircases that uh, will take patrons to the uh, the balcony level of the theater, and uh, it surrounds the rotunda. And of course, when you think of theater, you certainly think of live entertainment, uh, but this is a popular destination for people who are looking for a unique location for weddings. A lot of great talent comes to this stage, and if you go back to the early days of the Rialto, you did the era of vaudeville, so you had the great entertainers in the market. Brothers, Abbott and Costello. I noticed a lot of graffiti in this room. <laughs> Is that any, uh, any meaning to it? Well, some people might consider it graffiti. Um, I, I think it's one of the traditions of theaters that they have walls that uh, the artists sign as, uh, as sort of their legacy and they leave. They've left something else behind besides a memory. And certainly over the years, uh, there's been a lot of people through the doors of the Rialto who have left their mark here. 
So there's no way of knowing how many names are on these walls and these walls continue from the loading doors when you walk in, down through the dressing rooms, down to the green room. Well, we're at a historic location here in Joliet, what we call the crossroads of mid-America. Uh, this right here is Chicago Street, and this, but it's actually the first Route 66 that ran through Joliet. And over here is Castry, but also known as Route 30 and Lincoln Highway, hence the crossroads of mid-America. Uh, this gas pump is just one of five historic stop Route 66 gas pumps throughout Joliet. And just outside the historic Rialto Square Theater in downtown Joliet, we have a number of great restaurants and shops all thriving and ready for your business. What well, just behind me is G's Sweet Shop with the best cheesy popcorn you've ever had, at, as well as all kinds of ice creams and sweets and penny candies. Nice. But all along Chicago Street and throughout downtown Joliet, there's a number of great restaurants and shops. Okay, so we're still walking down Route 66 in the center of downtown Joliet, and look who we run into but the Marx Brothers, because that's we're in the center of our entertainment district. You can see the Rialto Marquee. There's not a show today yet, so it would, wouldn't be lit up. But on the nights when there's a pop named act there, all the lights are a glitter. All right. Now, if you notice behind us, there's just a few of, of the murals that, like I said earlier at the museum, are throughout the city of Joliet. They are by the Friends of Community Public Art, and they're really kind of a blanket that wraps our community in our heritage. Uh, the ones behind us specifically uh, are detailing the Irish heritage uh, and some of our other community uh, symbols. Joliet also had a prison. That's Were right. the prisoners, didn't they have to make that limestone? This, this historic building in Joliet was built in the 1820s and is by limestone quarried just across the street. The building was built by prisoners of the Alton State Penitentiary to then uh, relieve the overflow of prisoners on that facility. Believe it or not, at the time of this prison's construction, right where we're standing was a lily pond and a greenhouse. And visitors actually came once upon a time to visit the prison and pay 25 cents for a tour. No, oh, what was that was distinctive about that prison was uh, that they filmed the uh, movie. Oh yeah, but that Which was yeah. the movie called again? Uh, Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers. That's what was done. They filmed it. That's right. But they also made the stone in the. See, we you can tell. The prison the was made, made out of, the of stone. some kind of special stone. And that's very famous for that area. But they're famous for the Blues Brothers, uh, so yeah. you know. Well, Holly, what's coming up in the next episode? Well, we got Mard in Williamton. And we saw polka dots in Greywood. And we discovered the standard in Odell. Yes, we did. And Pontiac was just as I pictured it.